a Douglas C-54 aircraft carrying fuel crashed into a frozen river shortly after takeoff in Fairbanks, Alaska. The National Transportation Safety Board stated that fuel transportation flight operated by Alaska Air Fuel crashed into the Tanana River after departing from Fairbanks International Airport at around 10 a.m. local time. The aircraft slid into a steep hill on the riverbank, igniting a fire. No survivors have been found, according to the Alaska Department of Public Safety. The NTSB has dispatched agents to the scene to investigate and the airport is cooperating with the inquiry. My colleague Akshit Gupta joins us on the broadcast to give us more details on this. Akshit, uh, uh, what's the latest that's coming in as far as this crash is concerned? Well, when you're in a devastating accident, a Douglas C-54 aircraft uh, carrying a fuel uh, uh, met a devastating fate as it you know, crashed into the frozen uh, river shortly after uh, departing from uh, the Fairbanks uh, International Airport. Uh, uh, and, if, if, and if I just also tell you uh, as to what we are picking up, is that you know, the National Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration are also investigating the incident that involved a uh, Part 91 fuel transport flight operated by Alaska Air Fuel and the aircraft uh, tragically slid into a steep hill along the river bank, uh, igniting into flames. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, uh, uh, shockingly, no survivors have been found. Uh, and very importantly, in response to the crash, the Alaska Department uh, have issued a statement uh, confirming the absence of uh, survivors. Of course, you know, the authorities have, uh, have strictly dispatched agents uh, to the crash uh, site to commence investigations and collect the wreckage. Uh, and the recovery operation is, is still on. Uh, well, the Douglas aircraft crashed shortly after 9.55 a.m. Uh, you know, departure uh, from Fairbanks International Airport. Uh, and the plane, plane crashed into the river about seven uh, miles south of the airport. Uh, then uh, it went into a steep hill on the bank of the river where it caught fire. All right, uh, Akshit, with that, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast, sharing all these details with our viewers. Meanwhile, joining us at this point of time is Group Captain UK, they were not defence expert. So a very good morning to you and thank you so much for taking our time and speaking to us on News X. Now, as far as this tragedy is concerned, we're learning that there were no survivors. Uh, how do you view this crash? Uh, a very, very, very tragic uh, accident. Uh, the northern part of the hemisphere, northern part of the globe, uh, mostly it is frozen at uh, this time of the year. Uh, northern Canada, Alaska, Greenland. And uh, fuel transportation to remote uh, outlying areas is a very tough challenge. There are no roads to send fuel tankers. There are no uh, pipelines which can convey fuel. There are no rail lines. So a uh, very, very common mode of transportation of fuel is by aircraft. Douglas C-54 is a modified aircraft in which um, only two pilots fly it, pilot and co-pilot. And rest of the aircraft, instead of passengers, fuel tanks are uh, uh, installed, internal fuel uh, storage tanks. So apparently this aircraft, after takeoff, it crashed while it was proceeding on a simple day-to-day -day mission to supply fuel to remote areas. Uh, there could be many reasons, but since this happened immediately after takeoff, uh, reason could be uh, some kind of an engine malfunction. Huh. There are... Uh, uh, occasions when uh, due to bad weather, uh, which does not appear to be case this time. In those regions, due to bad weather, sometimes it becomes difficult to differentiate between sky and ground. Uh, the phenomena used by pilots is spatial disorientation, uh, wherein the pilot uh, does not realize exactly whether he is going towards sky, turning right or left. That also have uh, led to many such accidents in the past. One very, very remote uh, possibility could be, technical possibility could be, when this fuel splashes inside the aircraft in those massive storage uh, tanks, which are invariably, you know, uh, aluminium supported, uh, supported uh, rubberized fuel tanks, during sp splashing, um, uh, fuel vapors are generated. So, it has happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when these fuel vapors which got generated inside the aircraft, inside the fuel tank, storage tank inside the aircraft, um, they ignited and caught fire. But the chances of that happening is very, very remote, very, very rare. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.